Hi, and welcome to Modern Servant Leader. Today we have a real treat for you. I'm here with Larry Spears, who's really one of the godfathers of servant leadership, if you will. Larry uh, has written a ton of books, knows a great deal about Greenleaf's views on servant leadership. In fact, he was the CEO and president of, of Greenleaf Center for Servant Leadership for almost two decades, and now runs the Spears Center for Servant Leadership. So I use Robert Greenleaf's uh, definition, uh, uh, the idea that it is uh, the servant leader is servant first. I also think that uh, his best test of servant leadership is, right. is critical. Um, and uh, you know, to paraphrase, uh, are people healthier, wiser, freer, more autonomous, more likely themselves to become servants? Mm -hmm. And what's the effect on the least privileged in society? Will they benefit or at least not be further deprived? I think one of the key challenges is uh, an, an understanding of the underlying definition and philosophy or belief uh, that uh, Robert Greenleaf wrote about as part of servant leadership. Uh, mm. I think it's sometimes uh, tempting for uh, folks who are genuinely excited about servant leadership to want to kind of jump into uh, implementation without having done the personal work that is uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, servant leadership begins with the individual, and then once yeah. you have uh, kind of a critical mass of individuals within an organization, um, uh, it is also then possible for organizations to act as servant-led institutions. But, uh, but you can't get to that point, uh, I think, realistically, without having invested some time in your own personal growth and development. Uh, uh. I would say servant leadership, as defined by Robert Greenleaf, is neither religious nor secular, mm. but it's congruent with both. Mm. And so I don't see it as either a religious concept or a secular concept. Uh, I find the idea of uh, uh, the word spirit, which is a, a word that Robert Greenleaf used uh, frequently as well, is a helpful uh, uh, linking term because mm. um, I think whether you're approaching servant leadership from a religious or faith-based uh, uh, approach or from uh, a secular application within a, a business um, or the kind of institution. Um, everyone understands what spirit is and particularly what the absence of spirit uh, can mean when you don't find it in an organization. It's my belief and it's also been my own experience that there there is no place that servant leadership cannot uh, operate. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so let me take a couple of slices of this. Mm -hmm. First, I think it's important to realize that anybody uh, can choose to practice servant leadership wherever they are. Mm -hmm. It does not require the approval of your, your manager or CEO. Uh, mm -hmm. Servant leadership is within us, and it's about who we want to be, how we want to try to relate to other people. Mm -hmm. And we don't need anyone's approval to act as servant leaders within organizations. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I... You know, I think it's important to recognize that we can start uh, practicing servant leadership um, within ourselves and within organizations uh, where we work. Uh, you know, one of the arenas where I've seen the least uh, voicing of servant leadership in some ways has been actually in the political uh, uh, mm. government uh, s sphere. If there's an area where I'd like to begin to see more people talking about uh, servant leadership, it would be in, uh, in, in that realm. Huh. And practicing it more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, a couple of different thoughts come to mind. One is, um, has been the growth of servant leadership internationally. Mm. Um, you know, it started out as, uh, you know, Bob Greenleaf from the U.S. Um, and uh, the focus of the Greenleaf Center for 20 or more years was uh, really focused on the U.S., um, uh, when I came to the Greenleaf Center in 1990, I had a particular interest uh, in a couple of different areas. Uh, uh, one was around uh, the possibilities of international development around servant leadership. Ah. Uh, another was the, uh, the idea of servant leadership as related to education, and particularly higher education, but community education and other kinds as well. Uh, and so in both of those areas, um, I've seen tremendous growth and development uh, uh, in the last uh, 25 years years there has been an explosion really of, uh, of awareness and practices of servant leadership uh, around the world. Hmm. Um, I, th I think that anyone who is interested in servant leadership 
genuinely can practice it. Um, of course, you can feel lonely if you feel like you're the only person who's attempting to to practice uh, servant leadership within an organization. And so, trying to find allies within uh, you know whatever organization you're in is a good starting point. So, having said that, um, uh, I do know there are people who are also interested in working for servant-led organizations. And um, so for me, one of the great things you've, you've done uh, over the years with Modern Servant Leader has mm -hmm. been the, the compilation of these uh, uh, lists of uh, organizations, businesses, other mm -hmm. kinds of uh, institutions that um, have embraced servant leadership in, I think, a wide uh, range of ways. But yeah. um, mm -hmm. I think one of the great things you've done is to help at least provide some uh, some uh, starting point where people who would like to work for a servant-led institution uh, can uh, begin to explore and perhaps attain that uh, possibility for themselves. Well, thank you, Larry. And I did not pay Larry to put that plug in there for Modern <laughs> Servant Leader. No. But thank you. I That's appreciate it. It's heartfelt. <laughs> uh, I think it is possible for self-serving people to change over time. I think, you know, we've we see examples in life and literature of people who uh, mm -hmm. uh, who start out one way and end up another way. Uh, sometimes it takes a uh, a major crisis in one's life uh, to sort of see uh, see the light, if you will, uh, that uh, the way they've been functioning and operating is not a a good way to uh, uh, to be uh, in relationship with other people. Mm. So um, um, you know, the change also doesn't always happen. I began to notice certain uh, keywords and phrases that were appearing over and over in Greenlee's writings. Mm -hmm. And um, so I eventually did a, a comprehensive read-through of his published work at that time and uh, uh, wrote down a whole list of 40 or 50 different uh, terms, mostly characteristics uh, of servant leaders that he was writing about. Um, mm. uh, and then I went back through and uh, began to make little tick marks. Um, mm. uh, every time I saw the word in his, in his published work. And um, it was through that simple process that uh, I sort of uh, brought together these um, uh, top 10 characteristics of servant uh, leaders. Uh, over the last 25 years, they have, I think, helped many people uh, to sort of uh, develop an interest around servant leadership and particularly to find uh, ways in which they can uh, sort of grow and develop uh, as uh, servant leaders. Um, right. So, um, um, I think if, if we seek to understand and practice listening and persuasion and healing and the other characteristics that Robert Greenleaf uh, wrote about, um, it helps us to become more effective and faithful servant leaders over time. Nice, nice. And for those of you watching, if you're not familiar with the characteristics of servant leadership that Larry's been talking about, we'll make sure and provide a link to those uh, on Spear Center's website okay. for them to all see as well. You know, in general, I think that uh, leadership is about uh, people and management is about uh, systems and uh, other things. So mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, I think the essence of, of this is servant leadership is about relationships uh, uh, between people. Mm -hmm. And so um, while some people have, I, I've seen people talk about servant leadership as a management uh, approach or um, a theory, which I don't, I don't like that word at all. Yeah. I, think. Um, I, I think it's a philosophy of life. Hmm. Um, but it, it really is something that um, uh, finds its greatest uh, effect in, in starting with service, serving others, and then looking for ways to lead. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Larry, if there's anybody who wants to follow up with you or learn more about your work and the Spear Center's work, how do they find you? Uh, well, I'm on the internet at uh, www.spearcenter.org. Uh, so there's a website there with lots of um, uh, free articles and uh, essays that uh, you can download and, uh, and other information on servant leadership as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Larry. It's really an honor and a pleasure. We appreciate you taking the time for Modern Servant Leader. Thank you, Ben, and thank you for the work that you do. I really appreciate it, too. Thank you. Till next time, keep serving. <laughs>